Should you use nails for your project or screws? It's the eternal question, especially because it's so fundamental. In many cases, these two fasteners are our only options. So how can you know which to rely on for various applications? This is a surprisingly in-depth topic and there are a lot of hard science and engineering concepts at work here. But on my channel, I like to keep things simple. So today I'm gonna to give a more practical primer on the differences between nails and screws. I'll talk about their strengths and weaknesses and which one might be right for your project. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. Okay, let's start with the most important part of the equation, fastening power. How well do screws or nails keep two objects pinned together? In this matchup, there's really no comparison. Screws have vastly more fastening power, and this is because they have far more grip strength. Nails basically rely on tension for their fastening power. They sort of force their way into a material, then rely on that material squeezing them from all sides to maintain their connection. But over time, this tension may loosen, and when this happens, nails almost instantly lose their fastening power. You see this all the time on decks and porches. Seasonal expansion and contraction forces nail heads up, and during winter contraction, nails will literally jiggle around. They're not holding anything together anymore. I did a video on a quick fix for this, by the way, if you're interested. But screws really don't suffer from this problem because they have threads. As screws get driven into a surface, the threads cut their way into the material and act as little poles from the inside. The thread connections prevent pullout or extraction forces. Just try prying apart two boards that are held together with one screw. It's almost impossible. Even a coarse thread drywall screw is surprisingly strong in wood. But if two objects are just nailed together, you can pry them apart with far less force. At some point, the nails will just let go. You can increase their holding power by angling them slightly, but they're still limited. So if you're doing anything where you need two objects to stay fastened together for a long time without separating, you're almost always better off going with screws. Another great benefit of screws is that they're removable. If you're building any type of home project, ask yourself first, am I gonna to wanna to take this apart later? If the answer is yes, then always build with screws. Removing nails is a messy, violent process. You often destroy the components and fasteners simultaneously, but screws will generally just back right out. That makes them the best fastener for temporary structures of all kinds. So screws are stronger, they're removable, they seem like the better option all around but they do have some drawbacks and weaknesses where they lose ground to nails. For instance, number one, screws are more expensive. Pound for pound, they cost more than nails because they're harder to manufacture. So you have to factor in greater cost when you're project planning. And number two, screws are slower to install. There's a reason shoddy construction crews have a reputation for nailing pretty much everything, including deck boards. It's because nails just go in much faster. Screws include prep work. They often have to be pre-drilled and countersunk, and you have to physically manipulate one screw at a time on the driver. But the right nail can often be pounded straight in by hand or shot in with lightning speed from a gun. You can shoot 20 nails in the time it takes to drive one screw. And I will say here that yes, if you're building with nails, using nail guns is infinitely preferable. I know it's another thing to buy, or really two things with a compressor. But if you're doing a lot of DIY work, there's really no substitute for a brad nailer or even a framing gun. They pay for themselves quickly and they're not much more expensive than drills and drivers. Nails also naturally have more shear strength than screws. This means that they resist the force of two objects trying to slide across one another. Nails are slightly more flexible in this sideways direction, so they'll bend but not necessarily break. Screws on the other hand can snap very easily when acted upon by shear forces. For this reason, code typically requires that nails of proper length be used in nearly every framing situation. This plays a huge role in keeping houses together when acted upon by hurricane level winds and or earthquake vibrations. And I will say that you can sometimes overcome nail strength problems by pairing nails with adhesives. Carpenters often glue subfloors down with construction adhesive and shoot them with ring shank nails. The pairing works together to provide long-term stability. And around the shop, I'll rely almost solely on brad nails and glue to build many of my structures. The brads act as temporary fasteners while the glue sets up, and I get a bond just as strong as screws. But remember, I now can't take my structures apart. They're permanent. So I'll sometimes build certain components with screws for adjustability or breakdown potential. And if you're planning a construction project, research what pros use in the field for that application. 
You'll often find dissenting opinions, but there will always be standard preferences, like truss head screws for cabinet mounting and cleat head nails for flooring. So that's a little info for you on the screw nail conundrum. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments. Also, I'll link a variety of useful tools in the description, so feel free to shop those links if you see something interesting. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.